Here is the Zeus's Z690 D4 Tough Gaming Motherboard, which is hit or miss. Or in this case, I guess we could say hit and miss because there's some things they've done really well and then there's some things that they have honestly missed the mark on by a big shot. But let's get on with the hit first, and that is the VRM, where we've got a 14 plus one power stage design here featuring SIC 659 80 amp stages and also for the other VRM details I'll put them up on the screen for you but ultimately what this means is if you couple this with even the mighty i9 12900k overclocked this motherboard will do a fine job of handling that CPU where in this case I was able to manually take the CPU to 5.1 gigahertz all core at roughly 1.4 volt and that was actually a similar overclock clock that I've got on the higher end boards that have come in here that cost over pretty much double the price of this board right here. So that is some good news for this board if you're looking for something just for the VRM solution and to get pretty good power efficiency where this went up to 250 watts at this 5.1 gigahertz speed. Now for the efficiency cores in the BIOS, you've also got the ability to overclock them if you want to. Now, one thing I am going to point out though with this board that doesn't exist on the Strix E Gaming, which we will be taking a look at very soon, is that it does have a weird out of the box auto setting for the 12900K. In this case, it clocks to 4.9 gigahertz out of the box, but it uses up more wattage. And we went up to 265 watts while we're running the Cinebench R23 test, which means that this board is not that well optimized with the 12900K from the get-go, as opposed to say the Strix E Gaming or even the ASRock or the uh, Aorus Master Board that came through here, they all achieve that five gigahertz speed whilst using around 230 watts, which this board is more than capable of doing if you manually set it in. So speaking of the BIOS, ASUS do a great job of giving all the feature sets for overclocking as well as the extra features like tweaking, locking in XMP profiles, and also tuning your PWM fan headers, which you get six of them included with this board. They're all four pins. Then at the top and the bottom of the board, you've got RGB control for five volt and 12 volt headers, which you can control in the BIOS in a basic function of turning on and off and then in Windows you can use the software if you want to get a little bit more advanced with the Aura Sync. Though more good features about this board, you've got PCIe 5.0 16x on the top slot directly from the CPU. Then for M.2 support, we've got four slots, all four of those supporting PCIe 4.0 X4, and then one of those having hybrid SATA integration, and then three of those slots have heat sinks on them, one of those sharing a dual heat sink, which I did do tests on, and the heat sink did perform phenomenally well, keeping the M.2 under 50 degrees at all times during stress tests, and the speeds were absolutely fine on the MP600, which is a PCIe 4.0 SSD, and will gain those higher speeds. Though if you are looking for more PCI expandability, you've got two 1X slots as well as two 4X slots, even though the bottom slot is fitted for a 16X slot, actually only has enough pins to support X4. Then moving through the inputs and outputs, we've got six type A ports as well as two type C supporting Thunderbolt 4, as well as a 2.5G NIC. Testing out those USB speeds, as well as the 2.5G NIC, yielded reliable speeds, and same with the Wi-Fi 6, which is actually 6 and not 6E, which 6E is featured on some of the higher end boards that we will be showing upcoming here on the channel. Then you've got DisplayPort and HDMI outs, and then onto the onboard audio, which is where We've gone through all the hit, now we're going to go on to the miss here. And this onboard audio solution is a Realtek ALC897, but in the past I have tested out boards with this Realtek solution, where the results on other boards in the past have been absolutely fine, especially if you're driving it with a mid-range pair of headphones. But this one here in particular, the Tough Gaming Z690, really gave us some either mediocre or horrendous results depending on what we're looking at here. The frequency response curve, this is the mediocre results, we'll pull that up for you guys. And we can see here there's a boost from 60 hertz to 410 hertz, basically a plus four boost. So this will allow you to hear voices easier if you're on a Skype call or whatnot. Then past those frequency curves, they're relatively flat. But here is where if you want to use this solution for gaming, you will be sorely disappointed where the crosstalk was some of the worst numbers I've seen, mimicking that of even a really poor laptop where we had minus 35 decibels of crosstalk. And this was pretty much extending through the whole volume range. And so basically what this means, if you're playing competitive games, 
you'll have some of the left channel speakers coming through on the right and you'll probably be getting confused on where noises and footsteps and stuff like that are coming from and it will confuse you in games. So I would suggest if you're serious about competitive gaming and you use audio while you're competitive gaming to perhaps get a separate solution, maybe a sound card or a USB add-on solution that will just circumvent this onboard solution right here. But here's where it gets even worse for this motherboard and that is the onboard mic. If you wanna use a mic with this thing, it has to either be an extremely easy to power microphone or you are gonna get terrible noise coming through on this thing where I'll just simply give you guys a quick listen to how bad the noise can get on this mic import. So basically if you wanna use this mic import reliably, keep it at plus 20 dB and 50 volume or under, and that would be the threshold. Otherwise after that, you do start to get some really terrible noise creeping in. Though with those numbers aside, it's now time to give you guys a conclusion and my thoughts and opinions on the ASUS Tough Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. This is the DDR4 version as well, and the DDR4 version does support easy overclocking, at least with these Dominator sticks that I used here today. And there's not a whole lot of a difference for gaming between DDR4 and DDR5. And in fact, you can save quite a bit of money on the motherboard going with the DDR4 solution versus a DDR5 solution. And of course, the memory is also going to be cheaper as well per gigabyte. Though this is where we're gonna look at the price tag of this motherboard, and that is it's 290 US dollars, or in Australia it's coming in around 430 Aussie dollars, which is quite an expensive price for a motherboard. And usually when I'm used to seeing any motherboard over 200 US dollars, I do want it to hit all the marks at least to a very solid level. The VRM definitely does that, but I feel like the tuning out of the box for people who just wanna whack in a CPU put in XMP profiles, I feel like the CPU, especially on a 12900K, could use a BIOS update and a little bit of fine tuning to get the most out of the CPU, which the VRM, as we've seen with the 5.1 gigahertz all core overclock, is more than capable of doing. And then for the onboard audio, there's no other way to analyze it, but just say, this is pretty bad when it comes to an onboard audio solution on a motherboard of this price caliber, especially in 2021. Though with that negativity aside, the board itself has a very good build quality with a very thick six layer PCB. And I can't help but think that the heat sinks are very well designed and very well made, where on the M.2 they absorb heat very well. And same with the VRM with those temperatures on the 12900K, pretty much not even getting anywhere near the 70 degree region on the PCB itself. Where in the past I have seen mid-range boards that do support the higher end CPUs go well above 70 degrees and it just makes you feel uncomfortable, especially if you plan to use this in a long-term build. Now for me personally, I've seen the prices of a lot of Z690 motherboards out there. And if I was in the market and I had to buy a 12th gen CPU, I'd probably go for say the i7 uh, 12700KF or the i5 12600K. And this motherboard will do a great job of supporting those CPUs, but I would go out and buy even just something like a $30 sound card and then get around those issues with the onboard audio. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's review of the, I mean, the, the, the naming is Z690 Dash Plus Wi-Fi D4 Tough Gaming Motherboard. It's, <laughs> it's quite a lot to soak in, but hopefully the information in today's video was enough to help you make an informed purchasing decision. And with that aside, if you guys did enjoy the video, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below what you think of this motherboard and do the aesthetics appeal to you? I do think the aesthetics do look pretty clean, pretty solid. We do have RGB underneath the board and you do have that pretty decent RGB control, but I would like to see a Zeus implement uh, more RGB control within the BIOS itself, as well as implementing an internet update BIOS feature. So you just update the BIOS within the BIOS if you've got an internet connection. Though, we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Buddy1, and they ask, what do you use to prop up boards to display? Is that some sort of easel? Uh, these here, they're actually what they call clock holders. So this one here, it's funny this question came in because yeah, I just use these clock holders. Uh, I got these down the dollar store. They were really cheap, just a dollar. And I got two of them, a really thin one and a thick one. In Japan, I did the same thing. I had a different clock holder over there. So they're actually perfect because yeah, the motherboard just props up like that. And then essentially, 
you can have your nice display piece motherboard for everyone to look at. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content then you may wish to consider subbing and ringing the bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. Without a sight, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.